Greetings, fellow Earthlings, and welcome to Tales from the Hoop, a podcast dedicated to the weird, wild, and wacky stories from basketball history. I am your host, Ricky Freck, and today I'll be telling a story about a legendary ABA player to my brother, Matt, Matt Freck. <laughs> um, I know I told you last time out, like two or three weeks ago, we were supposed to record this episode in person, and then we ate too much food and got really tired, so we didn't do that. Uh, so I was going to do one. Originally, I said I was going to do one. You would know about the people, and then I changed it because I thought we were going to be in person. I knew this one would be uh, get a reaction out of you. Um, so you're not going to know. You'll know some of the people okay. in it, but you're not going to know the main person. So, okay. Shouts um, out to Central Barbecue and there in Memphis, Tennessee. It'll, it'll knock you on your ass for sure. Flight. That one, not just the food, Oof. but the bill will knock you on your ass right away because it is very expensive. Uh, okay. So here we go. On June fifteenth. Uh, nearly oh sorry i shouldn't dox you june 15th 1947 john brisker was was born in detroit michigan have you ever heard of john brisker or any professional athlete with the name of brisker 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 yeah. i don't think i know of a brisker i know of the briscoes okay uh, famous yes. wrestling sure. tag team the briscoe brothers um brisker no, I'm just thinking of like the iced tea, Lipton, Brisk. Are those oh, different different brands? I think, is Brisk even an iced tea anymore? They still um, make that? I don't know. But Did that go to the I, way of Surge? Uh, oh, is Surge done? I, might, I, might, I think it came I back. guess it. Yeah, I haven't seen a Surge in a very we, long time. Um, so... Dave and I are both from Oklahoma, which means we, I, actually, I shouldn't, I shouldn't speak for you. I frequented, uh, mm, okay, Dave, can you please educate me? Now I'm going to say this okay. up front. You're going to educate yeah, yeah. me about this term because I know I'm an idiot and I don't know for sure. What is the preferred term for, uh, what we would colloquially call, colloquially call a native American or an indigenous person? Like what do, what is the term they prefer? Cause you are happen to be married to one. You would hopefully know. And I, I do wondering. have, I have the, um, very cool actually, uh, license plate on the back of my car. Yes. Um, they repurposed, re sorry, redesigned our license plates and it's great. And I'm the 43rd person to have gotten one. So wow. I'm proud that my number is actually, hold on. Let's not reveal our license plate numbers, but yeah, yeah don't do that. Um, anyways, it is, uh, so there are, it is up for discussion would be okay. like the long answer. Um, native American is fine. American Indian is fine. Okay. Um, I, I think more people, uh, prefer native American than okay. American Indian. There yeah. is a really great documentary on the subject. If anybody wants to watch it, it's called, um, all right. hail the breadsticks or like hail to the breadsticks. Okay. I mean, I, do that. About, I did that every time I went to Olive Garden. So <laughs> it's about a Washington commanders fan. Okay. Before they were the commanders. Oh, I see. And then his son starts calling them the breadsticks when they're not supposed <laughs> to use the old term. Right. And they go on a hunt around a bunch of different native, uh, tribes and like ask people their opinions on it and stuff. Really good documentary. Um, they didn't go to Oklahoma, which was weird. But, weird. That's, know, a, that's it, fine. a weird one. Well, okay. Um, I ask. Oh, you're not finished. Sorry. I was just going to say all of those things. There is a new museum in Oklahoma city. Uh huh. That's called the first Americans museum. And that okay. term has caught a little bit of, uh, popularity amongst like some white friends that I have. I, I haven't heard a native person say it, but okay. I have heard other people be like, oh, we got to you know go with the museum and be good uh, woke warriors. Yeah, that's true. I mean, it's really great that two white people are explaining to you what Native Americans want to be called. But right. what, I, what I was asking is because I didn't want to say the incorrect term when I said I used to frequent Native American casinos in Oklahoma, mm. which are very popular. And the one I would go to when I was in college had... Maybe the only place in the world I've ever seen this, a guy's night where they would mm. give every male that came through the door $10 to and spend. So it was tough out there. <laughs> so I would take mine to the $10 machine, put it in, because if you won that, you got $60. I could buy a new video game. Never won. 
Uh, but my friends would then continue to gamble their lives away. And I would go over to the free drink machine and they had surge on tap. So, and this was mm. in Love 2008, it. 2009. <laughs> so Love way it. past the surge days. Um, but yeah, so I don't know anything about brisk iced tea. Maybe it's still around. Who can say? Um, but it's like it'd be a very good mixer. Both actually surge and brisk. I don't I don't feel like the the Are core you... product by itself is that popular, but uh-huh. you put some vodka and some surge, you know. Are you supposed to mix alcohol with like energy drinks? For loco, it's the best <laughs> there is. I mean, I agree with you, but I think like the FDA would disagree. Sure. Heart attack or <laughs> Heart whatever, attack. but like, you know, have a good yeah. time. Yeah. Um, okay, so Uh, John Brisker, born in Detroit in 1947, early in his life, his mother had suffered a stroke, leaving her leaving half of her body paralyzed. Brisker later told reporters the government wanted to take us away from her, but we she went to work and raised us. Growing up alongside his brother and two sisters just outside Detroit, Brisker quickly grew into one of the toughest kids in the neighborhood in Detroit. Oh, this is a quote. Excuse me. Quote. uh, Brisker once said, quote, in Detroit, if you're tough enough. They name playgrounds after you, which is a great. I, I like that quote a lot. I, I was going to say the toughest kid in the neighborhood in Detroit. I mean, that's something, right? Yeah, he's. I don't know how to pronounce it, uh, but he's. He lived in a place called like Hamtrak. It, it's oh. like H A M M T R C Q. I don't know there's a there's a bunch of weird letters in there. The for the further north you go, the more I can't pronounce in this country. <laughs> fair, that's it's, fair. it's insane. Um, Okay, so we don't know too much about Brisker's life before college, but he did spend some time in high school hanging out with a few other pros. And you might, you may, maybe you've heard of these guys, probably not. Uh, Rudy Tom John, Rudy Tom Tom Johnovich, and Spencer Haywood. So you you do know, okay, Tom Johnovich, of course, uh, coached the Rockets in the 90s. So I was assuming you might know that part. Uh, Oh, I think that may be, I was going to say, I know the name Rudy Tom Johnovich, but maybe it's coaching, not. Uh, playing. I mean, he was a very good player. To be fair to him, Haywood was pretty good, right? Yeah, he was. Yes, he. Uh, we actually talked about him previously because he yeah. was the first ABA guy to go straight from high school to the pros. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, okay. So the Detroit boys routinely, and actually, I believe, if memory serves, Tom Jonovich. I might have it backwards. Tom Jonovich is from Detroit, and Haywood moved there like in middle school. Okay. So I, I, that, that, might, that might be flipped. It might be Tom Jonovich moved there. I don't remember for sure. Um, but the the Detroit boys r- routinely drove by the local Buick de- dealership, boasting about being able to buy one easily once they went pro. So they were they pretty confident that they were going to be good players. That'll tell you when they were because <laughs> Buick hasn't been a car that you want to aspire to. For what, what, what you do know. you think the last time? a 17 year old has been like, I'm driving by the Buick dealership. Cause yeah, I want one of these excited. It's gotta be like 73. 80s? Oh 80s. yeah. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> well, the only person I know that drives Buicks is our grandmother. Um, but she has had one for like 20 years now. So yeah, well, you know, it's a, it's a, I mean, it's a, it's a classy car That's for a classy right. lady. Yeah. If you ever With listen her... to this grandma. With her paper towels and her uh, water, four water bottles stashed uh, securely around the car. Just Don't in case. forget the uh, the cheese crackers. Got to have those cheese crackers just in case someone has a medical emergency and they need food. That's right. We got some cheese crackers on That's hand right. in the glove box. Uh, Brisker certainly had the skills to go pro. The six foot five swing man averaged 24 points and 20 rebounds as a senior. Uh, later in life, Sonic's teammate, which maybe gives some stuff away, Slick Watts. Do you know anything about Slick Watts? I know that he's regularly on name like uh, lists with cool names. Yeah, you know, um, I I couldn't tell you like what kind of player he was, but definitely like the type of name that sits with you, and then you go to do like create a player in two K, and you're uh-huh. like. Well, I can't think of anything good today. Let's do like Slick Watts. Slick Watts. Yeah, he's so, uh, that's about guard, all. Solid point guard, very bald, always wore a headband. Okay, uh, pretty fun little guy. Um, I don't, I don't know why I said it like that. Like we're wow. friends. <laughs> <Pretty fun. laughs> and like... also, also, I'm sure he's as tall as I am. I'm sure he's around six two. <laughs> so he's probably not that small. Uh, that is my favorite thing about athletes and especially basketball players. Oh yeah, is uh, Russell Westbrook is a great example because he looks like the shortest guy out there. 
And I've never gotten crazy close to him, but I was yeah. like near him at an event one time. Mm -hmm. And it was like, you know, you're looking up. Who is that guy over there? Isn't he six four? Yeah. He's not that tall. Sure. But he, like in my head, you think he's, he's like the five shortest feet guy on the court by a mile. You think he's so the classic 5'11", like, like, like you are, like not actually six feet tall? I quit. <laughs> that face. Uh, I've stood next to I went to, to the doctor uh, recently. Okay. okay. And I did have shoes on, but it, it was 6'1". So I just Dang, look at you. Out. You're growing. Um, it's because you've been doing deadlifts, so it's lengthening your spine. <laughs> I've been deadlifting a lot. I'm trying. Also, uh, for those who don't know, you're this i just feel like this is a good psa to get out there you should be deadlifting more than you squat oh uh, like, I'm, not like the frequency but how much how much weight you're deadlifting correct i did not know that partially i hate deadlifting so i was just deadlifting mm. the least amount that felt still hard a little bit yeah and then i looked that up and it turns out that that, that was probably like three or four years of me deadlifting less than i was squatting yeah and, you know, turns out. So I did start, I was like, let me just try. It's a lot easier to deadlift more weight than it is to squat it. It's <laughs> it's pretty nuts. Yeah. So don't make those mistakes for <laughs> all you gym bros learn, out there. Learn from uh, your 32-year-old, how old are you, 32? Yeah. 32-year-old yeah. friend, Matthew David Freck. Um, okay, wow, I shouldn't dox you like that. Okay, uh, so back to <laughs> Slick Watts. He called him, this was later in life, not, you know, he didn't know him when he was in high school, but he called him. Okay. Now, this is this is a crazy, crazy comparison. LeBron James with more skills. Okay, yes. Now, that sounds mm -hmm. hyperbolic, but okay. Spencer Haywood made the exact same comparison. He said, quote, John was a LeBron James. That's telling. That's some serious shit I know, but that's who he was. They said this about John Brisker. Yeah, that he was as good as he was like had the same skill level. It's not okay. skill level, but skill set as LeBron James. Okay. And before LeBron James was born. No, I'm just uh, joking. They probably said yeah, that later. Most on likely. Life. Oh, yeah. I see what you're saying. And then they predicted the future. <laughs> like, I was like, wait a second. No. Yes, this was much later in their lives. Okay. Um, okay. So Brisker, uh, kind of surprisingly, actually, for that level of skill, to me at least, is he went to Toledo for college ball, potentially grade wise, not really sure. Uh, he continued to step the stat sheet during his first two years on the team. He averaged around 18 points, or excuse me, 14 points and eight boards over those two years. And he looked primed for big things. Notably, he also played college football wide receiver for the Rockets in 1968. And he joined the marching band as a tuba player. Okay. That's, oh yeah, I was going to say, it's very cool to have played football. Th that is another step, up, like two steps up if you're also in the marching band. Do you like, perform like, that's what like I was during halftime? Yeah. <laughs> no, I don't know. Sorry, maybe he, I mean, he might have done it afterwards, right? Like maybe he stopped playing football so he could be in the marching band because the coach wouldn't let him go mm. out on the, uh, the field to perform at halftime. I don't know. Maybe he uh, we will probably get into it later. I didn't really write okay. it. I think I get into it a lot later. He was like really into jazz. Um, okay. <laughs> so he just really liked to, but like he, he was, it's like his thing. He's like, I'm going to play basketball, uh, play some jazz. And then one other thing we'll talk about here in a minute. Oh, um, I love this. Uh, unfortunately, he flunked out of college as a senior, so he decided to head to the ABA where his old friend Haywood was playing. Uh, Haywood was playing for the Denver Rockets, but Brisker yeah. signed with, can you guess? Probably not. I don't think you, do you, have you, do you have any guesses on what the Pittsburgh ABA team is called? What their I was going to say, I couldn't tell you a single ABA team sure name. San Antonio Spurs. So, okay. Sorry. Other than the ones that, uh, <laughs> Pittsburgh. You'll never get this. Not in a million oh. years. Um, they're like, I mean, steel Steelers. Yes, correct. That some is kind of metal. No, they're mm. also uh, famously the Penguins. Yeah, I didn't think it'd be that. Uh, the Panthers. What's good about Pittsburgh? Only been to Philly. I'll give you a hint. It starts with a C. <laughs> a good hint. <laughs> the yeah, no, I'm I'm not gonna go there. The Pittsburgh Condors. Okay. Uh, he Fantastic. Was a, why? Do we know why? The the... I didn't look that up. I mean, I could okay. have, but Fair I didn't enough. look that Fair up. There's, there's some other stuff I had to look up later that I went a much deeper dive in. We'll uh, come back actually. to that in post. Yeah. We, well, yeah. Maybe I'll, maybe future rookie will pop in and let you know why they're called the Condors. <laughs> Probably not. Um, he was an instant star in the ABA. 
averaging 21 points and six rebounds as a rookie. Uh, Brisker played for the Condo Condors, not the Condos, for two more seasons, making the All Star team in both, while averaging 29 points and nine rebounds a night. Good lord! During his second year in the league, he finished ninth in MVP voting. However, it was another part of his game that would make Brisker one of the most feared men on a basketball court. Oh boy! You see, Brisker had anger issues. Yeah. And the man was tougher than a $2 steak. Okay. There's a good reason he would later earn his nickname as the heavyweight champion of the NBA. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> if another player so much as looked at him wrong, Brisker would throw hands. There oh, are no. hundreds of stories about Brisker brawls, but here are a few of my favorites. Oh, brother. Um, Let's do it. <laughs> in 1971... Brisker got into a fight outside of Three Rivers Stadium following a World Series game. That night, the big man sent two police officers to the hospital after getting into it after getting into it over a taxi. So he okay. and the police officers were fighting about who could get who could take that taxi, and he started a brawl against a group of police officers and did enough damage on his own with no help. Yeah. To send two guys to the hospital. Yeah, I'm sure this won't hold up, but that I'll give him at least some points there for waiting until he's outside. It, uh, it, well, I think he got it. kicked out to be fair to him. Or <laughs> you know, that's fair, but still, I mean, we so far so good. I mean, uh, you know, cop gets in your face. Oh, <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Let's, let's not incite <laughs> violence, but um now this one is not so much like him fighting, but it's just funny to me. Uh, Utah, uh, another team you might know from the ABA, once hosted a John Brisker intimidation night, and they put pro professional boxers on their bench to try and, quote, scare Brisker. That doesn't sound real. Like, <laughs> they, so they got on the Jumbotron, and they're like, John well, Brisker's coming. I, this I mean, sounds more like professional wrestling than it does. Okay, so have you seen the movie Semi-Pro? Yes. Let's just say that that that's not completely fiction, like the stuff. <laughs> okay. okay. So it, it kind of is professional wrestling. Yeah, quite a bit actually. I've never done a lot of ABA. I would love a good ABA documentary. Oh, there's got to be some out there. Also, before we go, is there a? a, a the answer is already Draymond, but like, could you imagine who's the best player that if we're gonna have a a night like this? Mm. He let's say you're the Grizzlies and someone's coming into town. Jaws is actually another good candidate for like everyone's going to be mean <laughs> to this guy. Like who's who's the the starting five of that team? So I want to be who who's it's going to be entertaining like. for them to yeah 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 it's going to be entertaining to throw them off by having an appreciation a disappreciation night. Okay, un unappreciation night. Sorry. Okay. Uh, Pat Bev, unfortunately, he's in Israel, oh, so he doesn't make the good. team. Okay. Uh, Fair. Who'd be the point guard? I'm trying to think of a point guard I don't like. I mean, I, so this I'll, is my I, favorite. Go ahead. Go ahead. I, okay. So uh, apologies in advance for what I'm about to say to uh, my mother, my wife, uh, my the, God and everyone, <laughs> but the Memphis crowd, if we if they were allowed to do anything they wanted would have a field day with Josh Giddy. So mm. if uh, if Josh, yeah. Josh Giddy could be the starting point guard, I think. Allegedly, allegedly. Uh, my my runner up, I think Giddy's the answer uh, allegedly. Russell Westbrook is my favorite player of all time. Really? But huh. he, he is so easily uh disturbed by fan interaction. Ah, yeah. Are you shocked that he's my favorite player or that I'm yeah. putting him on the list? I'm shocked he's your favorite player. I mean, it's the Thunder, and maybe Nick Collison has a better Thunder legacy, but who else has oh, done okay. more? Legacy. For... Sorry, I was like, you, <laughs> those are the two people most people think about when they think of their favorite player, Russell those Westbrook are the, and Nick Collison. Those are the two jerseys going to be in the rafters. That's all I'm saying. Okay. Um, but Russell Westbrook gets very irritated very easily mm. at fans, and so he would be, and he doesn't, you know, you could do the Westbrook stuff. like Yeah. It would be very easy to upset him. So, it, it you couldn't get as creative as you could with the Josh Getty situation, uh -huh. but not that I would. But yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, two guard, dig. I have a really good three, maybe even a four. I don't really know what position yeah. he plays. 
Who, man, I, okay. I'm saying this and kind of like taking a different tact in that, okay. like, if you try to talk shit to this guy, the shit talk, he's going to talk back to you would be legendary. Like, honestly, he might, this guy is probably my either first or second favorite player in the league right now. And he's very young, but I cannot wait for him to retire because when he okay. joins a broadcast team, it is going to be the best thing in the world. And that is Anthony Edwards. Oh yeah. 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 That's fair. Like that guy is incredible. Yeah. Um, very much like a Hollywood Hogan esque. <laughs> yeah. Like he can eat it and give it back. I love yeah, that for sure. I was thinking, I don't know if you count him as a two, but mm -hmm. currently at this moment, Jason Tatum, mm -hmm. because there's so not that it's his fault. I love Jason Tatum, but the uh, fodder that we currently have yeah. with Jalen Brown and, you know, all the Olympics and stuff. Yeah. Also would throw out uh, Bradley Beal because, you know, he's not again, seems like a great guy, but you can just. Uh -huh make all the t-shirts in the world about how terrible his contract is and you know oh trust me yeah i'm uh, a different series i'm doing his contract has been one of the more annoying ones to deal with um, <laughs> i bet yeah uh three guard i think no question is grayson allen if you okay. have three guard th the three spot either three or four i don't know what he really plays yeah definitely like the most hateable player on planet earth of all time i think i don't That's even know, like if a Suns player, Suns fan is out there and they tell me they like him, I don't believe you. I think you're a bot uh, from Duke or something. I don't know. Uh, Speaking but, of yeah. bots, my three would be KD. I think you could, oh, you could do it all online before the game even starts. <laughs> I think so. I think you put KD, put KD at the four for me. That was where I was okay. going him. I definitely have KD on the team. Okay, he's, my he's, mine would be Draymond. Yeah, I was going to put Draymond at the five. So okay, my five. Who would I put? And Dwight Howard, like unfortunately, it. isn't in the league anymore. Yeah. Definitely be able to see. Um, probably, my wife asked me if I knew who Dwight Howard was today. <laughs> yeah, kind of. I feel like uh, DeAndre Ayton is very fun to make fun of because of yeah. his, his dominating thing. I was going to say Gobert. He's oh, just yeah. such an easy target. He, he's getting point. run through the mud right now, though. It's very I, funny. I feel really bad, um, especially when Draymond's the one that doesn't like you. I don't really care. Because it's Draymond, but <laughs> yeah, yeah, Shaq the other day saying and calling him the worst of all time. Yeah, Yikes. and then well, actually, Anthony Edwards. I was thinking, I was thinking also was Rashad Rashid Wallace, but Wallace was saying on his. I was like, I said a tweet about we need to end player run podcast because Rashid Wallace was like, oh, who was it? He was like, Anthony Edwards is not better than this guy, and it was like some nobody like that never played anything. Mm. <laughs> I was like, what are you talking about? Oh, it was Derek McKee. <laughs> Dang. Like, you don't even, I mean, most people probably don't even yeah. know who Derek McKee is. I mean, he's a good <laughs> right. defender. He's a good right. defender, but like he was not in his first four years an all pro, right? So he's not right. like, not even on the same level. Uh, anyways, okay. back to Brisker. Brisker Band stories. Appreciation. Brisker appreciation that. Yeah. Uh, so I, apologies. I don't know how to pronounce this name, but uh, Coach Tom Nisalk uh, put a $500 sure. bounty on Brisker before a game and watch one of his players lay Brisker out with a cheap shot. Uh, however, late when he told when he later told Brisker about what happened because he had become his coach, the uh, enforcer said that was a pretty good move, coach. <laughs> fair enough. Uh, hey, all all is fair. Uh, and then this is a, this is like the most famous one during a game against the Denver Rockets. Brisker got him got himself injected in just two minutes after elbowing Art Becker in the head. Mm. So he was sent off the court, ejected. Uh, and despite that, he charged the court three more times trying to go after Becker another time. Was he on the bench the whole time or, or yeah, was he coming so. out I, of the locker room? I, I mean, they, I don't know that times. for sure, but yeah, he was, he may, maybe out of the locker room. I don't know. That part, I did not find uh, anything. I just said, or I just read it that he came back out several times and have okay. seen some clips of it, but it doesn't show I'm, like where he's coming from. He's just like charging the court again and people are holding him back. I'm sure the rules and the fines are much different these days and oh, probably yeah. mostly due to stuff like that. Oh yeah. But I mean, I just couldn't imagine, you know, Anthony Edwards, like coming back out from the tunnel that again, it sounds more like professional wrestling than it does sound like the NBA. Like mm -hmm. how would anyone allow that? He would have to get past so many people. I'm telling you, the semi-pro was semi autobiographical. Uh, it's semi-real, <laughs> semi-biographical, I guess. Because, uh, anyways, uh, Billy Knight. He got traded for a washing machine. 
<laughs> I mean, that's not not too out there. Okay. Uh, Let's get there. Uh, Billy Knight said in Terry Pluto's book, Loose Balls, the story. Wait, the oh, <laughs> I put the short wolf life, but I think it's supposed to be the short hmm. wildlife of the American Basketball Association. Uh, he said, the first time I played a game against Becker, Brisker, excuse me, he turned toward me and busted me in the mouth. I didn't even do anything. <laughs> Charlie Williams added, say something wrong to the guy, or at least something he thought was wrong. And you had this feeling that John would reach into his bag, take out a gun, and shoot you. You gotta let him know. Uh, you might think that last quote was a bit extreme, <laughs> but Brisker was known to bring his handgun to practice and wave it around when he was feeling particularly upset at how things were going. The guy had all the talent in the world, but his anger made him a liability. Fortunately for him, the Seattle Sonics decided to bring him in on a six-year, $1 million contract. Uh, during his first season in the NBA, Brisker averaged about 13 points a night, but showed flashes of his talent by dropping more than 30 points four times. Good Lord. However, the organization <laughs> would make a big change that offseason, bringing the legendary Bill Russell in to serve as the team's coach and president. Coach, okay. I was going to say, they played together? That's insane. But... <laughs> no, that would that would have been wild. Uh, this is a good pairing. Uh, okay. Sure. Uh, I mean, we'll see. We'll see. Uh, fire and ice, baby. Fire up, you know. Maybe, maybe he Brit, maybe he helps uh, mentor him and bring him along. And you know, I'm predicting good things. It could have been that way. Maybe okay. it could have been that way. Uh, in training camp ahead of the next season, Brisker had what might have been his most controversial dust up yet. He and forward Joby Wright were scuffling near the basket when Brisker punched Wright in the mouth, breaking his jaw and knocking out four teeth. Quote, hit the ground like a bag of potatoes, Watts said later. Uh, Brisker walked off. Ain't nobody say shit. The gym was like a funeral. Ambulance came. Russell told everybody to go home. <laughs> At least he, I thought you were going to say that he fought Bill Russell. Like he punched mm. Russell. It's like, good Lord. Oh, okay. Well, it doesn't quite get that far. But okay. that year, Brisker and Russell would frequently butt heads. Reportedly, Brisker, or excuse me, reportedly, Russell didn't think Brisker played good team ball and often benched him despite his ability to get a bucket. At one point, he demoted Brisker to the Eastern League, which was essentially the 70s version of the G League. Okay. Uh, oh. In his first game there, Brisker dropped 51 points. The next game, <laughs> he upped it to 58. Yeah. Russell Love it. was never impressed. Uh, ahead of the 74-75 season, Brisker had his first child, a daughter, and seemed to change his attitude. He said, I got to grow up. I know that now. Attitude is very important to me. I'm going to turn my whole life around. I've been carrying a big chip. Felt it was me against the world. I got a bad rep, but I'm going to live it down. I, I love this. A new man. Yeah. Bill I mean, Russell this, is going to help him. If it were a movie, which I would argue maybe this should become a movie. Uh, this would be the, the turning point. This is when we're going to turn everything around. We're going to have a great season. Supposed to happen. This is what's supposed to happen. Hug each other. Yeah, that that's this yeah. is the, that's a lifetime movie version yeah. of what happens. I will say, anytime a man has a kid, especially like a daughter, and yeah. that's that's all of a sudden what's going to change it. Yeah. I looked into her eyes, and now I have to treat women nice. You just know <laughs> there's no hope. Like <laughs> if, if they didn't have respect until that point, they don't actually have it now. Is this a is this a a, a off a shot off of a uh... Tony Reigns right now? Is that what you're doing from the challenge? Are you shooting so, at him? No, not at all, but it absolutely applies. Yes. <laughs> He's an insane person who mm. it does not matter that he had kids. Um, that doesn't make you a good mm. person. I'm, but sorry, kids. I'm sorry, not to say anything about, wrong with people that have kids, but. No, they suck. Uh, you you made a mistake. <laughs> I'm just, I've heard that from people. Uh -huh. That aren't good people. And guess what? They're still not good people. After. <laughs> uh, okay. So as we said, it would if it was the way it was supposed to be, they'd embrace, they'd win a championship. Uh, unfortunately, it doesn't quite go that way. Brisker narrowly made the team that season despite his huge contract, but found himself stuck on the bench completely due to Russell. The coach would give him a game here and there before benching him for a month. He tried to trade Brisker, but couldn't find any takers again because of how big his contract was. 
Brisker said the team even tried to buy him out for 50 cents on the dollar. And everything came to a head on January 31st, 1975. Uh, that night, the Sonics were playing the Blazers and found themselves down 81 to 63 to start the fourth quarter. Let's go. Just like Greg Jennings, Brisker put the team on his back, scoring 28 points as the Sonics stormed back to win the game 106 to 103. Okay. You'd assume after such a shock victory, everyone would be happy. But the Sonics locker room was filled with tension as Brisker just glared daggers at Russell. Yeah. I thought he was going to kill him, Watts said. All of us were scared. He wasn't coming at us. He wanted the coach. Just because he had proven it now. And he's like, we got to put all this aside. Wow. Mm, yeah. Uh, despite I that. I can't imagine it played out well. Sorry. <laughs> Despite that effort, things didn't change, and Brisker only played in eight more games that season. He would never play in the NBA again. And we are going to take a short break, and we'll get into what happens in the back half of John Brisker's life. All right, uh, where we last left you, Brisker had just finally left the Sonics, um, and things were not going well in his professional life, at least on the court. Sadly, things were much, going much better for Brisker off the court. Um, I mentioned this earlier, uh, but I didn't bring it up in the writing until here. As a young man, Brisker had developed a love for jazz, and he'd used some of his career earnings to buy a club in Seattle. Uh, That's unfor great. Unfortunately, it closed after the 75 season, and Br Brisker was on the hook for more than $40,000 in rent, back taxes, and insurance. Now, we've talked about inflation before on this podcast. <laughs> I don't know what that means in modern day money, but I assume it's a lot. Because seventy two million dollars, I think. And uh, yeah, pretty close. Yeah, uh, maybe so. He made one million over six years, which is the best contract never. Yeah, well, I mean year. it was pretty good back then. I think. Yeah, that's fair. Uh, for reasons that aren't exactly clear, um, Brisker then went to Africa. Okay. What happens next is literally anyone's guess. Yeah. So let me ask you this before we get into this. Do you have any knowledge of what was happening in Africa in the 70s? Oh. Specifically um, in and around Uganda. I'm going to guess no, but I'm just asking just in case. Uh, there was like a... Uh, um. Like a government overthrowing, um, like apartheid situation, right? Or is that later? Um, yeah, you're correct. You're pretty close. I'm not super big on my African history, and so <laughs> my timelines are blurred. That's fair. But... Uh, yes, no, there was definitely. I mean, yeah, you've probably seen. Uh, what is that movie called? Uh, the Last King of Scotland. I know of it. I've never seen it. Okay, so I think that has to do with kind of that period in Africa. Okay. Okay. And, oh, so he's going to go commit himself to the cause. We'll see. Um, officially, John Brisker was declared dead on May 29th, 1985. But that's oh, no. only the beginning part of this story. Oh, no. Uh, there are few things we know essentially for a fact, but everything is a little bit of a mystery. Here is the rough timeline as we currently understand it. In 1975, his brother Ralph said John had gone to Africa and at some point purchased land in Nigeria. In 1976 or 1975 or 1977, Spencer Hay Spencer Haywood says he spent a week with Brisker at Haywood's New York Brownstone. He doesn't really remember the year, but it was one okay. of those two. Okay. Uh, during that time, Haywood says Brisker told him he wanted to quote go back to his roots. Haywood told him that he needed to get help for his anger, and Brisker brushed him off. Haywood also says he thinks Brisker showed him a picture of him with Ugandan dictator, and I apologize if I mispronounced this. I think I got it right, but Idi Amin. Yeah. But he isn't 100% sure if that was actually the guy he was in the picture with. Um, now, we're going to talk a bit more about Amin later, but do you know anything about Idi Amin? I know the name, which means it's probably scary, right? <laughs> Like, yeah, yeah, fair. That's yeah, that's a fair assumption. Um, in 1977, Brisker's wife Michelle 
filed for divorce, saying he had abused her, leaving her deaf in one ear, and that he had, quote, smothered me until I couldn't breathe. In March 1978, he allegedly traveled to Uganda to launch a, quote, import-export business. The last Vandalay con- Industries. Let's, I love it. <laughs> uh, the last confirmed time anyone spoke to Brisker was on April 11th, 1978, when he called his Seattle-based girlfriend. We don't know where he called her from for sure. Okay. She claims it was Africa. We have no idea. Okay. Uh, from there, there is no telling what's actually true. But there are countless theories. As mentioned, he was declared dead in 1985 to settle as a state. But it's worth noting that the State Department has never been able to confirm if he, one, actually went to Africa, and two, a spokesperson said that they, quote, essentially, we don't consider him dead. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Okay. Yes. Continue. Okay. So there again, there are several theories. We don't know. We but not, all of these are theories. We don't know for sure. Okay. Okay. One theory is that the Africa story might have been a cover, as Brisker was on the run from the mob due to all of the money he owed on his jazz okay. club. Yep. Uh, I'm going to tell you right now. I don't think that one's true. But oh, it's been okay. out there. I think that's not true. But you no, know, I don't know for sure. Another absolutely wild theory says that he was involved in the Jonestown suicide mur- suicide massacre in yeah. 1978. Do you know what Jonestown is? Yeah, all the... Uh, I don't remember the guy's name. It's not Jerry Jones. But, uh, <laughs> so I'm just kidding. Um, yeah, they all went to live in South America. No, it like it's, in Af- it's in Africa. Oh, really? I believe so. Future Ricky here. Dave was absolutely correct. The Jonestown Massacre was absolutely in South America. It was in Guyana. And very soon, I'm going to mention that people died in a fire during Jonestown. That's not actually true. I am correct that the Jonestown people didn't all willingly commit suicide. However, I mixed up Jonestown with the Movement for the Restoration of the Ten Commandments of God. That was another unrelated mass suicide murder that happened in Uganda in 2000, where over 300 people died in a fire. I just got those two events conflated so my apologies now back to the podcast yeah um but that's where they drank the kool-aid yeah and yes and uh and, but there was like burnings and stuff they put people in a church and burned them yeah there was a, there was uh I, I, and, well i mean that was afterwards but after i do they, have a fun fact about the kool about jonestown okay a lot of people think that drinking the kool-aid is because like, it became like a term that we use right yeah and a lot of people think that it's the cult leader is like um, having you drink it unknowingly, like you're not sure, right? Of, that there's poison in it. They did know that there was poison. So he was, uh, okay, he was announcing out loud that there was poison, and that they were all going to go. I heard that on a podcast, so maybe it's not okay. True, but. So here's what I will say: is that there were, I think, I believe, as I understand it, which again, I also heard it on a podcast. Um, <laughs> Uh, I believe, as I understand it, that some people were what you would call, and I'm going to use, these are the most heaviest air quotes you can ever imagine, okay. true believers mm. and did do it. But there were also a lot of people that were tricked. Okay. Okay. Uh, so I think it was both. Um, so I went ahead and wrote, wrote in here, if you're not familiar, 909 people died from cyanide poisoning as part of the cult suicide murder involving the people's temple. Um, but And then afterwards, like a lot of the bodies were burned. Uh, so that we could identify them. Uh, but however, as I said, I don't think either of those theories have a ton of credibility. They seem a lot more like just wild theories people have proposed yeah. to explain a disappearance. Right, yeah. um, what seems much more likely is the rumor that Brisker, Brisker somehow got caught up in the Ugandan-Tanzania war. Though what that actually means is anyone's guess. He went to Uganda and it was as a mercenary and he was fighting over there. Former teammate Tom Burleson said his wife went with him and he was captured by Idi Amin's men and Idi Amin had him prepared and they served him and his wife banquet style. Now, just in case you're confused, because it is a little bit of a confusing sentence. What he is saying is that Idi Amin murdered him and then fed him to uh, him and his wife to other people as in human cannibalism. (laughs) So, so the call, if if you have to finish, 
No, 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 no. You're good. Okay. Go ahead. So the call that he made, the last known phone call, was to his wife. No, no, to his girlfriend. Yikes. So again, this. Th- so what I just okay. read is a rumor from his former teammate. It's not actually true. Like we yeah, don't know yeah, if that's yeah, true. Yeah. Sorry, if that wasn't clear, that was a rumor. Yeah. Um, sorry, I might not have made that. I was trying clear. to piece it together. I was like, how could he say that? If but <laughs> yeah. if it, he was no. on the phone with someone else, <laughs> possibility. Uh, yeah. So uh, all these quotes are rumors, right? So just take that for with you. I, so I probably should have said that up top. We don't know if any of that stuff's true. It's just what people say. Uh, so now the brutal dictator, I mean, as we said, was known to brag about eating, fl- eating human flesh, uh, but there's nothing official to back up Burleson's claims. Okay. Um, so maybe I should have kept reading. I forgot I put that in there. Uh, <laughs> similarly, Slick Watts said they had, they said he was sitting at a table with one of those Kings over there. And they had an argument and Brisker, Brisker wouldn't relate to the argument or agree with it. In that country, you don't dishonor the king. And Brisker had one of those, I would really like to know what he means by this, had one of those grr moments. And they said the guy had his, the guy had his gun covered up like a turkey was in it. He moved it and pew, shot him. That's the legend anyway. Uh, wow. Again, again, um, you know, do, are any of these things true? We have no idea. Uh, those larger than life stories, though, best for it with Brisker's legend. And what's more than likely is that he did go to Uganda and he's one of the 100,000 to 500,000 people killed during a means dictatorship. Or if he was part of a means mil- mercenary forces, another rumor was that he joined up with a means team and was like fighting in the war as part of a means like mercenary forces. Uh, he was killed during the war and is one of the many bodies never recovered. Or maybe the rumors are true that Amin personally murdered him because he was coaching because his coaching of the Ugandan national basketball team wasn't up to snuff, which is another rumor. Oh, or, Lord. or maybe he moved to Africa where the 77 year old man is living a carefree, quiet life. Probably not, but let's, we can hope, right? I guess. Yeah. Uh, unfortunately, we'll never really know. Though, if it is the latter, hopefully he has a cable subscription so he can watch his grandson, Jaquan Brisker, play safety for the Chicago Bears. Isn't that great? (laughs) It's all full circle. I do think it's probably likely that he was killed in Uganda, or you would have heard of him. But, (laughs) I mean, it's possible, right, that he's still out there. I mean. Highly unlikely, but very possible. I mean, it's possible he didn't. He went there, disappeared and just died later. He might not still be alive, right. but he might yeah, have died in that. Change his name, got yeah. new papers, hid. Yeah. He we, I money. mean, we we will let her literally never know. Yeah. Well, there's no way any of this. I mean, there, there, yeah. And I don't want to spoil a future story, but there are a couple of these that it's like true crime stuff. We will just never know the answer. Yeah. It's uh, for a different series we're doing. <laughs> yeah. um, okay. So sources, Seattle Times, Seattle P.I., uh, basketball reference for stats, which I do every time. So if I forget to say them, I apologize, but I always use basketball reference love for basketball stats. Love reference. I love them a lot. Uh, and then Bleacher Report. And then I just wanted to read this. I, I don't want to say this is funny because it's not. But I do want you to know what Idi Amin's official title he gave himself is because it is mm. maybe the most batshit thing you'll ever see. <laughs> let's, let's hear it. Uh, this is his, remember, he is a, he is the Ugandan dictator in the seventies who, uh, I think they got, I think he got taken out of power in 1979. I believe I could be wrong. My dates could be bad. I don't know. Um, but here is what he gave himself as the official title. Keep in mind, none of this is true. Alleged uh, cannibal. Alleged cannibal. Yeah. He doesn't include that in his job title, but yes, also <laughs> okay. that, uh, he calls himself his excellency president for life field marshal Al Haji. Haji, apologies, I probably mispronounced that. Doctor Idi Amin Dadi, VC DSO MC CBE, Lord of all the beasts of the earth and fishes of the sea, and conqueror of the British Empire and Africa in general and Uganda in particular. And also, he started calling himself the Uncrowned King of Scotland, which is probably where the uh, movie title comes from. But yeah, what a crazy! Hey, if you're good at names, you're good at names. You know. <laughs> Yes, and also he doesn't like any of those degrees he claims to have. None of that is real. <laughs> he just likes to say stuff, or he just like to say stuff. I'm pretty sure he's dead. Um, he just watched Game of Thrones, and he's like, "It's so cool when they introduce Daenerys." Let's sure, yeah, for real. Um, okay, so that is the story of John Brisker. Hopefully, you and the audience have learned something today. 
Uh, do you have anything else you would like to say before we get out of here? See you soon, John Brisker. <laughs> well, hopefully not too well. If he's still alive, hopefully soon. If he's dead, hopefully not too soon. Uh, fingers oh, crossed yeah. on that. Next yeah. time we'll probably do a non um, true crime story, but there are several I have in the hopper. So Go. we'll get there eventually. I know my Bison to LA fans can't wait. Um, <laughs> so we will get out of here and see you next time. Goodbye.